Pupping therapy on the forehead. So you might be interested to learn what cupping therapy actually is and, and its history. Uh, the way it's practiced now is you make you put literally a cup against the skin, make a tight seal, and often you then will heat it, you know, for example, by lighting um, the, a part of it so that it heats up and then it creates a partial vacuum and it sucks the blood up to the skin surface. It basically gives you a round hickey, right? That's what it's doing. Now, why would people think that this has any therapeutic benefit? So first, I think we should state, no, it doesn't, right? There is no reason to think that it has any therapeutic benefit, and there's no evidence that it has therapeutic benefit. And don't quote anecdotal evidence to me because there's anecdotal evidence that anything can work, including stuff we know is harmful. Anecdotal evidence is basically worthless in, as far as efficacy claims go. So, no, there's no reason to think it works. It, it can't plausibly work. It's really just all nonsense. Now, back in the day, back you know, prior to modern times when, when cupping therapy was done, you know, before modern medicine, what were the claims being made for it? The idea was that there was, you were pulling the blood energy up to the surface uh, in order to release it. And it, it very much was bloodletting type of therapy. In fact, in some traditions of cupping, the, the, you know, the creating the hickey was only part one. Then you would have to make an incision in the skin and let the blood come out, right? So it was just a way of facilitating the bloodletting. Uh, and very much based on the same idea of like the humors, although just, you know, more couched in Eastern philosophy of chi. But still, it was just bloodletting. It was just the, you know, Asian version of bloodletting. Um, and that was pretty much it. You know, it was, it was just superstition-based, magical-based treatment, not based upon anything physiological, on any understanding of how the body works or how illnesses work, and certainly not based upon any evidence that it's, that it's effective. Now, of course, modern practitioners have to couch it in more modern terms. So they'll still, you know, some of them will still say it's about chi or whatever, but often now you'll hear that, well, it's drawing the toxins up to the surface of the skin. What toxins? You know, again, they're just throwing that out there. There's no, that's not based on any evidence or any theory. It's just a rebranding of the same old treatment. They just throw the word toxins in there. Or they might say it improves blood flow. Really? By sucking the blood out of the blood vessels? That's how it's improving blood flow? And you know, there's no reason to think that that's the case. Um, there's no reason to think that, that any of the symptoms that people are going to cupping for is due to impaired blood flow or insufficient blood flow. Uh, so it's a, again, it's a completely superstition-based practice. It did uh, have a little uh, increase in popularity during the Olympics a couple of Olympics ago. Um, before that, there was the kinesio tape, and then there was the cupping. And then you can always tell, obviously, when somebody you know underwent cupping therapy, especially if they were engaged in a sport where they had to to bare their skin, like swimming. You could see the swimmers who all had cupping therapy because they had the little pock marks all over their skin. Um, and, you know, athletes, especially elite athletes, are notoriously superstitious. Uh, you tell them that something will give them an advantage, and, you know, how could they say no? Uh, but, again, completely absent any scientific rationale or any scientific evidence that it's good for anything. Uh, it really is just ancient bloodletting. Your escape to reality. 